Hi, this slide is a summary slide of not just the last five uh, Mastery Path graphics that we looked at, but I even draw on a few concepts that were in clips earlier, like praising, and I anticipate a few uh, concepts that are yet to come. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Uh, a first summary point I want to make is that is that um, the uh, we can display different patterns in different parts of our lives. So it's okay to be a hacker, and really the great majority of activities we do, uh, how I brush my teeth and comb my hair and ride my bike, I, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm prosaic. I'm just every day. I just do, do it the way I do it. Um, it doesn't mean that a dentist couldn't come along one day and say, gee, you know, you need to get this little vibrating special kind of uh, toothbrush and do it in a different technique, and then I switch over and do that. I, I in fact, did do that some time ago. Uh, but it's important that we're an honest hacker about it. In other words, this is what I'm, this is who I am, and I'm happy to do it. And I don't feel that I'm harming anybody else because I'm not moving along the path. Uh, there aren't other people who are being uh, compromised because of it. I'm, I'm, I'm a good steward. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving things better than I found them, generally speaking. Uh, so that's an important distinction, I think. The second point is to realize that that if we can find, you know, one or two important paths. Uh, that we can stick to, it's a, it's an endless source of uh, inherent intrinsic uh, motivation and satisfaction. I mean, the rest of the world could be, you know, falling apart as far as we're concerned, but we can go do our one activity, particularly a sport, for example, nothing changes about it. Gravity is gravity and so forth, and it helps us to center, get back to sort of a measurable physical reality and uh, and sort of reset. It's, a, it's like a home base that we can touch and do something from a therapeutic point, and then we start to get our learning momentum, et cetera, and move on. And you'll find that with mastery, at first, as you get better and better at something, you really start to you know, feel a lot of pride and so forth. But at some point, uh, we ideally will cross a line where, yeah, you know, I, I used to have a lot of pride in the fact that I was really good at doing something, but I kind of got over that. I mean, really, I'm just doing what I'm doing, and what's more important is help other people move along their respective paths. Um, and this would have presumed that we can be happy with our new personal bests as opposed to being concerned about, you know, I'm not number one overall. Uh, sometimes uh, we'll run into a person who basically chides us, puts us down for not being as good as they are, or their kid is better than your kid or something like that. And, you know, in a nice way, you'd really like to say, well, yeah, that's fantastic. You know, congratulations, really terrific. But, you know, if we step back and we looked at, you know, the number one guy on the planet at this activity, that's a whole other level of game. How do, how do you and I or our two kids, how do we all work together to help one another move along the path at an optimum speed and be excited about moving to the next level? So it's not a competition in a provincial Bush League uh, myopic way. It's a, it's, a, it's a process that we can all share and uh, benefit from and help one another along. The, um, and also, as we do the praising, we're praising the process, the inputs that go into mastery, as opposed to uh, praising the outputs. And we see this in, in our distribution businesses where we have ranking reports of most profitable customers, most profitable items, uh, um, this, that, whatever. And there are people, things at the top, and there are things at the bottom. And we have, but those are symptoms. What are the root, root, root causes of why the very best is the very best right now anyway? and the worst, and we'll find out that there are pieces of, of environmental luck. I mean, we have to have competitors who are asleep or suppliers that, you know, gave us a break or lucky customer situations. Uh, give ourselves credit for seizing the opportunity, um, but we have to split out uh, the luck from the skill inputs and say, let's keep focusing on those skill inputs because then everybody can become ever better at a greater rate. Uh, we can fall off a path, we can stall on a path, that's very typical for a while, we're humans. But we can also resume and to be able to, to call it when we see it and say, oh, you know, I've fallen off the path, well then I've got to get back on it and so forth. Um, that's an important skill set too. And I've given two references here. First of all, in, in George Leonard's mastery book on page 152, at least in the paperback edition, there's a checklist of all the key concepts that go into mastery, the science of mastery, and things that knock us off the path, things that keep us on the path. And you can combine that with what you can learn from a wonderful new book that's still, you know, just out 
called The Power of Habit by a, a, a very good investigative author writer named Duhigg. Uh, and he talks about habits at the neurochemical level, an individual group, company, and even society. So uh, I can, I really recommend that. I mean, in a sense, we're all just a bundle of habits for better or worse. So how do we constantly, you know, reform our bad habits and, and reinforce and, and, and accrete, add to our good habits? Last point here I would recommend, this is from a personal experience, having at least one sports path that you can stick with, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, uh, obviously, getting out and moving around is good for your health. But in sports, it's a great way to not only learn how to learn, but keep improving that and staying in touch with that. Because in sports, the feedback is, is instant and measurable. If I am at the driving range and I hit a vicious hook and it goes into some guy's windshield over in the parking lot, uh, and I've got pain shooting up my my arm, it's hard to blame that anybody else. It's like, ooh, you know what, what did I do there, you know, on the inputs to give me that bad output? Um, and one thing about sports is also is you can spend a lot of time self-learning. You always want to check with the master to make sure you're practicing perfectly, et cetera. But it's a, it's a wonderful discipline skill set. And then what we do is we turn the art of mastery into a consistent practice in, in science. Once we know the science of mastery, we can leverage ourselves. We can teach our children how to do it. We can teach our, our, our fellow employees how to do it, which is a very important part of parenting and leader, leadership. Um, and of course, the sport reminds us to try to practice path improvement in other activities that aren't so easily visible and measurable, like am I really a black belt, first, second degree spouse, parent, professional, and so forth. Um, where do we get the motivation to stay on the path? I think uh, philosophical mindfulness and starting to be in touch with truisms we can believe in that give us uh, faith that what we're doing is the right thing is good. Uh, I think that if we can design clever experiments for failing forward, if we can build in the concept of flow so we personally are on the hook and engaged, these are important things. And if we keep improving our willpower habits, uh, and our endurance. It turns out that willpower is a habit, and you, like a muscle, you can you can you can you can make it more fit. Uh, these will help us uh, on our mastery uh, missions. Thank you.